Hello everybody, welcome to Spoof Nature. It's finally warming up outside. We hit 55 today. Uh, it's kind of balmy. I almost stripped down to the boxers, grabbed me a glass of iced tea and sat outside. Uh, but I think there's probably some state laws and some gaming laws that I got to look into, so I couldn't do that. Uh, I am looking forward to this weather finally warming up enough to get outside. Uh, it's camping, kayaking, you know, fishing. Do, uh, survival there's lots of things we can do outside but it's got to warm up and that's we're getting there so what i'm doing today is one of the five product projects that i have left for muzzle loaders uh this here is a moroku this was brought over probably the 70s and 80s i believe uh for remington that's what i read this was from japan originally uh the uh, lock that is not here i did see a picture of it and it's not a loss the thing looked like it was made with a claw hammer and some nails. It uh, was really disappointing. So the plan here is since I don't have a lock, I'm going to take this barrel out and I'm going to put it into this. This is a piece of uh, Indiana black walnut. It's been set for about eight months now. Uh, I think it's dried enough that I can start working with it. I'm pretty excited about that. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to rip this apart and see what we get to work with. And uh, can't say that that's a bad thing because we're men and that's what men do. They tear stuff apart. <laughs> okay, so we got our part. Uh, there's a trigger, really simple. So we can use that. Uh, trigger guard, ta-da, one piece, odd, that came off, nose cap, and then the barrel. Um, like I said, that was pretty rough. We got, the blue is still pretty good underneath, but uh, it's not hard to tell where that stock was. So we got to uh, clean it up, it up with the uh, emery cloth and re-blue that for sure. Or brown. Probably just go with the brown. It seems to be a lot nicer. It appeals to me a lot more. Uh, definitely have to clean this out. So let's just go ahead and do that. Let's get this barrel ready. Uh, we're going to clean it out, clean it up, and then we'll get started on the stock. I don't see any pitting, but it was under pretty heavy. Uh, obviously neglected. <laughs> so now I'm just going to take some steel wool and uh, just go over it and try to polish it up some more. Okay, day one's done. 180 grit sandpaper on the outside. Knocked all that rust down. I took the uh, steel wool and buffed it down even more. I can really feel it my shoulder now. Uh, the barrel at this point is completely filled with uh, PV blaster. And we'll let it set for a little bit, dump it out, run that brush down through there. I'm really hoping it's not pitted. There was so much rust I couldn't really see rifling in there. So uh, I'm hoping it's not pitted that I have a shootable barrel. Well, on the upside, there was the barrel was not loaded. The gun was not loaded. I was very thankful for that. <laughs> so always in the back of my head, a little fear that I have. But thankfully, this was not loaded. Um, day one's done. And I went through every possession I ever owned in my life, looking for the, the uh, bottle to uh, put the plum brown on it. Didn't have it. I had the degreaser. I had the uh, bluing remover, which would have been handy, I guess, but I cannot find that plum brown. So I'm gonna have to order it, and while I'm waiting on that, there's plenty more to do. So stick around, this adventure is only getting started. Okay, finished product. I hope I got a good picture of this before I started. Not sure that I did, because this turned out really well. Um, this is what I'm using. Did a coat of that, and then after I rinse that off, I did two coats of this, two applications. Put this on, let it set for two minutes, and then still wool. I am now ready to put that on. I uh, just want to add that the kitchen is a great spot for this. Uh, there is a time constraint uh, because the wife will be home shortly and I want to get this done. <laughs> but the uh, sprayer on the kitchen sink worked out great that I could put, just gently rinse this off rather than um, dip it in a bucket or use a wet towel. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to warm this up and put the uh, plum brown finish on it. But this is looking pretty good right now. 
Look at the completed project right there. Well, completed barrel. Um, just gonna let it set and cool down a little bit and then rinse it with some water and then put a coat of gun oil and just let it set and then by tomorrow it should be fully cured. So it turned out pretty good. A nice plum brown. Uh, best part is uh, the wife's not home yet. This project is completed. So unless she watches this video, I don't think she's gonna know. <laughs> Alright, so moving on. Okay, so here is our next adventure. Uh, the barrel's all done, uh, plum brown, turned out pretty good. There's a lot of work getting that rust off the surface of it. Uh, the rifling turned out to be pretty good. Got that all clean. Uh, this is going to be the next beast for tackle. Uh, this here is an Indiana black walnut. The first thing I'm going to do, <coughs> oh, excuse me, <coughs> is cough. Second thing I'm going to do, take a block plane and get this flat. And then I'm going to flip this over and get this flat. And then at that point, we're going to inlet the barrel. So that seems like a big part for me. <laughs> Looking forward to it. So let's get started. <clears throat> okay, so here's my clamping setup. Um, since I'm not rich, <laughs> I got two scrap pieces of 2x6 laying around. Um, I screw this one down first, clamp this one into it with the pipe vise, and then screw it down. It's pretty tight. So that's how we got that set up. I'm going to go ahead and I'll work on this end. You see, I can see uh, there's a lot of unevenness on this end. So I'll get this work down here and then uh, probably flip the butt stock around and put that in between the boards. So let's get started. Okay, so now we're going to lay that barrel on. We'll get it flush to the top. Well, now we'll mark the bottom of this wheel. And that way I can put in the um, measure for the ramrod. Um, there'll be a little tin in there to put the wedge pin through. So, we got that. So now I know where my barrel's going to be. Alright, so now I'm going to inlet this barrel. And, uh, this is the tricky part. This is, this is what sets in all of your your lock mechanisms, your hand, you know, the trigger. Um, it's all going to come off of this. So this is where the first thing needs to be set in, and then uh, that'll give you a starting point to set your lock to set your trigger, and that's about it. Sounds easy, don't it? <laughs> so this uh. This here is going to give me trouble. It's tang. I can see that already. But we're uh, going to do the best we can. Okay, so uh, first thing first is I'm going to mark my center line of my stock from stem to stern all the way through. That'll give me the center for my barrel. Uh, then I can find the center of the barrel itself and line that up. And this being octagonal, it's going to be handy. Because uh, it will give me my lines that I need on the outside. So we're just going to do a workaround with that. So first thing is, let's get our center line. We got our center marks on our barrel. Line up the center of the stock. I got my scrap line just where I want it. Alright, time to get some chisels. Okay, so our first cut, we're going to go ahead and cut this to length of the barrel. Okay, I'm going to take that tang and I'll put it on that center line. And uh, it's time to set this barrel. Nice little mark. Okay, so I'm just going to use a one inch wood chisel. Um, I got my line scribed. Use this nice little handy tool. 
Scrape that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the flat side on the outside, and I'm gonna go ahead and score that on both sides. You don't want to put that bevel on the outside because it'll push your wood out. Right now it's pushing that wood in. That's what I'm wanting. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep doing this both sides, and I'll get back with you. Okay, I got way ahead of myself. What I need to do is cut this notch out for that barrel. And then I can come in and chisel out the bed for it. So I got my marks there. I'm good to go. A little darker. Okay, my first cut. And that's where we're at. Okay, now, I can go through all that trouble again <laughs> of getting my marks for the barrel and then, and then getting the end of that. So, got it right now. Uh, that's where, ta-da, the tang of the barrel is going to set. It's back in there. So, what we'll do now, um, get my marks and start in letting that barrel again because I'll have a better idea what's going on. <laughs> All right, so now we're just going to move on and start shaping the stock and figuring out where things are going to go in this. So the fun's about to begin. So here it is. Um, I'm at my quarter inch mark here. And I come down here nice and straight. Uh, here's where the barrel, excuse me, here's where the barrel meets. Put that up there. All right, there's the tang. So that tang is where that barrel will begin to, to break over you know and this is all theoretical at this point I do like I don't really hope you can see this uh, the, the wood grain comes along and then it sweeps down so I got a continuous grain all the way through that wrist and uh, I'm really happy to see that <laughs> seems to make it worth it so now we're gonna cut this out and get this shape going in stock so uh, take a little more out here yeah after I catch my breath um, after this we're going to have to clean this workbench up it's getting really cluttered right now so uh, we get that cut out clean up this mess and start over okay so there it is uh, the really roughed out version of my gun stock so that's going to be a lot of work. All right, so we're going to get this tool bench cleaned up and uh, start again. Okay, so <clears throat> the bench is all nice and clean now. Uh, I got something to work with. And this is the stock that we have so far. Yeah, and there's the barrel and a few parts that did come with it. So, all right, we're going to move on.
Time to cut the ramrod groove. So I got a center line um, down the bottom of the stock where the ramrod's going to be going. And now I'm just taking the gouge and working that out really slow. It's got some 60 grit sandpaper uh, on a drill bit. Now we're just going to do a lot of this. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and drill the hole for the ramrod. Uh, I got this really long bit at uh, Harbor Freight for like six bucks. So that's where we're going to drill that in. Uh, you got to start it out really slow at an angle and then lay it down into the track. And then after that, it's going to uh, be its own. I'm going to get something to hold this down back here so it doesn't jump out of that track. That'll stabilize it a little bit. So that's going to be our next step. The uh, ramrod groove turned out pretty good. I even sanded it. And uh, started out with 60, wound up with uh, 180. So that turned out good. So these came in, um, Deer Creek Products, uh, here in Indiana, and I got a nice patch box cover, and this was probably the greatest find ever. And so now, I can put this into this. I got the barrel set, uh, I gotta get it from the other side. Uh, I can put a pin in there if I wanted to, uh, but I can go ahead and set this lock in, and I do have to go here on the side and notch that out for the uh, the powder hole so after I get that done then I can begin setting the lock into that that's just a good looking lock I like that okay moving on Got that set in. Uh, it's tight against the barrel. It's a little misleading with the shadows, but it is tight. Because they get that barrel. The barrel has to come back some more. That'll get that all lined up. But uh, I got the lock set, and that makes me happy. Okay, so there's the hole um, that syrup pin goes through uh, for the trigger. I got the center line marked on the bottom where the trigger is going to set. I put this on top <clears throat> and figured out where I wanted to set that trigger uh, that it's, it's going to hit that. Now, and then I just marked my trigger, the center of the trigger on the bottom. And now, I got my mark here. I'm going to line that up with the trigger and get the center here. This is all speculation and uh, what do you want to say, guesswork on this. Um, as far as where this is going to come in at. But <clears throat> got plenty of word, wood to work with right now. And so I'm going to use that to my advantage and just go real slow and move everything together. Um, then once I get all the pieces set, the holes drilled, and know where I'm putting everything, then I'm going to go ahead and start forming this stock. So at this point, uh, we're going to inset the trigger. Alright, so finished product. I uh, got the cheek piece on. Get this all blended in a little better. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to set the barrel in, but then i got to make the uh, trigger, trigger guard, nose cap, uh, ramrod, and uh, ramrod lugs. So from that gun that I had to start with, the only thing I got out was the barrel. <laughs> so, and the lock, uh, the lock I bought from the Deer Creek Products, and it was turned out to be pretty nice, and I got that set in. So, 
Uh, we're going to do the trigger next and the uh, trigger guard. And then we're going to move on from there. So that's the next adventure. Here we go. Okay, so a, uh, another piece of flat steel. Uh, I actually cut it off that piece, the scrap piece that I made the uh, original trigger mount, if you want to call it that. So I have a slide out line. That's just a rough idea. Um, hacksaw, I'm going to cut that out. And then uh, we'll go from there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you make a trigger. So now I'm going to shape this. I like a little, I like a good fat trigger that I can feel my finger on it. And then, as you can see, there's our trigger. All this piece here is going to be the part that actually activates the uh, sear pin. So let's get this trigger shaped. Okay, so so we got so far on the trigger. Uh, this is what we have on the um, on the other part. Okay, a little bit of fine tuning to do, um, but this is the uh, finished product. This thing come out pretty good because there's like no travel at all. That trigger is tight against the sear pin. So. Pretty excited about this. I could probably play with this all day. Alright, so we're going to fine tune that, dress it up a little bit. Kind of make it a little more, a little prettier, I guess. But uh, that's it. I got it to set flush. I got to drill the holes for that. Uh, the actual uh, barrel screw goes through the sock into that. So that'll probably be my next. Uh, Next item to be doing. That is just cool. All right, stick around. All right, so the uh, trigger assembly is done. Get this first here. We go. All good to go. I uh, wanted to do a brown finish on it. Uh, plum brown, same as the barrel. It's just going to add the antiquiness of it, and uh, I like that style of trigger there. So we're going to put this on the gun and finish up some details, and we're closing in pretty quick on this one. Okay, so this is what we normally have is a, a side plate. Uh, the bolts will go through it, and that's what holds the lock into the, uh, the wood. I don't have one. This one doesn't fit, so um, what I do have is this piece of brass. Uh, it's off another project for a uh, Kentucky rifle. It's left over. What I'm going to do is try heating that up and then bending that to the shape that I need. And uh, probably going to have to drill a hole to get the bolts to go through. But uh, that's the plan right now. Kind of make it look like a ribbon or a snake, one of the two. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so flatten that out pretty decent and uh, it'll still work. I might give it a little more tweak, but then I got to take this 90, 45, and then come back down with it. Right, so uh, that's all we got. Turned out pretty good. Um, find my holes. When I do something here, shape a little bit, round these corners off. But uh, I'm kind of tickled the way that turned out for having a, not having the brass that I need and this piece is laying around. So, um, 
we're gonna make that work I can line up one hole there and drill the other one so I think we're gonna go that route with it I turned out pretty decent and uh, I'm a happy happy man Okay, so I just got to braze these holes shut and then fine tune it. I think we're going to be there. Turned out a lot better than I thought it would. So uh, let's go get these holes brazed. Turned out really well. I was really impressed with this. I came up with this idea. If I come up with an idea and it works, that makes me feel pretty good about myself. <laughs> Alright, so we're just going to shine it up some more and uh, see about putting on the gun. Okay, so um, I think we're done with this thing, finally. Lock set in, barrel set in. Uh, yep, yeah, there's that. So now I want to tear this all apart and we're going to do a finish on it. That's going to be cool there. This spot up here, a particular favorite of mine with that burl, that's going to look sharp. So, all right, we're going to tear this apart and then. Uh, Put the finish on it. Okay, so now I'm gonna make a ramrod because uh, everything's been custom so far on this gun. Uh, the finish is drying, so I'm gonna go ahead and move to that. I got a nice piece of oak here, uh, this grain, all the way through, start to finish. You can buy a dowel rod, uh, you take a chance of uh, that grain not going off the length of it, so when you use it, it breaks. Um, this is a really good grain. So uh, I'm gonna cut this down. Uh, a little bit over 3 8 that's the diameter I'm wanting. And then uh, put the blade at a 45 and cut an octagonal here. And once I do that, then I'm going to run it through a jig and uh, I'll show you how I make a ramrod for this. So let's get started. Alright, so as you can see now, I got that squared. It's now an octagonal. And I'm going to run it through my jig and uh, make it round. Because it's easier making a uh, circle out of a square. So let's do that next. No matter what diameter they are, uh, the important thing is that it overlaps the hole that you're wanting. So we're going to go for 3 8 The uh, yeah, the ramrod, uh, got it tapered on both ends. Uh, one's to fit through that hole to start, the other one is to uh, fit the drill. So let's get started. Here's the thing I like to do. Um, just got a copper nail and uh, ran that through there. And I'm going to cut that off and, and uh, flatten the ends out. <clears throat> that gives a little bit of holding power. All right, so with that done, now it's just a matter of smoothing it out and sanding it down. And uh, easy peasy, nothing to it. Now, this also works on arrow shafts, which I've done. We'll probably do a video on that on cedar arrows. Cedar arrows. I've done them before. Uh, we'll probably do that again. So we'll go ahead and get sanding and we'll just keep going. Okay, so here's the finished product. Uh, yeah. That's some good looking water or what? Yeah. 
Okay, reverse side. Yeah, we gotta go to the full length because that's a lot of work. I worked on every piece of this. Uh, the snake turned out really well, uh, the bolts. So, uh, some good detail on that. Hope you can see it. Nice trigger. And this down here, I particularly like this. Uh, I got the cheek plate, but it's got a real nice um, marbling there. That turned out really well. I'm happy. I'm a happy man. <laughs> All right. Uh, best part. It works. So, pretty happy with all that. And, I don't know what else to show you here. It turned out well. I didn't bother putting a butt plate on. Um, you can see that. I just want to be able to see that wood drain. It turned out really well. So. Okay, so this has been one of the most aggravating, tedious, uh, labor intensive projects that I've done for a long time but it, one of the most satisfying I really enjoy this um, it's a flint lock you know I've always wanted a flint lock couldn't always pay the price for one but uh, it's a beautiful wood and uh, I'm gonna put a link in here uh, there's actually some brothers of mine Brian and Steve uh, they have uh, two portable sawmills that they rent and use and they uh, hooked me up with this piece of walnut and then just the piece that comes out of the ground the trees growing so it already had that grain going I don't know if you can see this or not if you can follow this grain from uh, front to back it actually flows over the hill of the gun here uh, it doesn't cut it's not layered the grain actually moves the longer I orientated the, uh, st the stock as I was laying it out on the wood so that that grain would come right over that hill um, great product so I'm gonna put their phone number and link at the bottom of this and uh, you just get a hold of them Indiana walnut is what this is and it's a, uh, a beautiful wood one of my favorites uh, next project it's almost Indiana turkey season so uh, I found it's cleaning up I have this 50 cent a goodwill we're gonna make a turkey call out of this that's going to be a turkey call. Oh man, I'm really happy with this one. This is one of my best projects that I've done for a while. So I know it's been a long span uh, between videos because I've been working on this. Uh, the weather outside not cooperating. And uh, we had snow last weekend. Two days before that it was 70 degrees and we had snow. So turkey call coming next. And uh, there won't be such a span between videos now. Uh, I got a lot more projects to move into. S uh, shorter, smaller. Um, if there's something on this gun that you want to see in particular, uh, like the ramrod or something that I probably didn't get because going between getting the camera in and doing stuff and then, you know, moving through there, uh, sometimes I didn't remember to turn the camera on. <laughs> so uh, there's probably some gaps in there. But it turned out great, and I'm really happy with it. So, we're going to keep moving here. Uh, I'm trying to maybe get some spring fishing in. Uh, we're going to see how that goes. The weather's got to cooperate, and it isn't right now. So, I'm Gary, Spooner with Nature. Thank you for watching.